Hey guys, this is Daniel Kreuter with another Blender tutorial and um, today we're going to have a look at again something that has uh, to do with, with the cell fracturing but um, this time something a bit different so as you can see this here is uh, the test scene that we're going to make in this tutorial and what this all is about is mainly the texturing um, because we're going to have a look at how the normals are being handled after the, the fracturing progress and also how to um, texture all the inner inner faces of of the fractured uh, objects and also as you can see we have two different textures uh, here inside and outside um, yeah, and I would say let's get started right away. So, open up a new scene in your Blender 2.64, more important to update your Blender to the test build, which is available now. And yeah, that, then go to your user preferences to add ons and activate the cell fracture add on. So we can fracture our, obje our objects. We don't need the camera and the lamp for now, so delete them and select the cube to start working with it. So before we want to fracture it, we'll go to edit mode, bring up here a new... Oh, now let me just very quick um, activate the... Um, you know, the screencast thing. So you can see what, what I'm doing. Down here. Okay. Um, so here I, I opened up the UV editor, UV image editor, and then select all of the cube and let's do just a, a smart UV projection for now. So nothing perfect, but for now it, it works fine. And add a new image to it with with the UV test grid for now, so we can see um, a bit texturing on it. Okay, so this is um, our UV texture number one. Let's call it outside or something. We're going also going to add another one called inside. Um, yeah, okay. And we'll leave the inside one just as it is right now. We don't have to change anything about that right now. But um, we also need to add another material here, so that we have two materials. And we can already start um, doing the material setup for the for the first one. So add a light to the scene and change the display mode to GLSL, just so we can see what what the material looks like in a preview. And let's start doing the setup for the first texture there the one for the outside. So let's add a texture, image or movie with um, the test grid for now. Um, map with the UV coordinates of very important to select here with the outside coordinates. <clears throat> okay. Um, now as as a next thing I, I think we can already start fracturing the object. So uh, bring up the tool, the tools here, the object tools, and click on cell fracture. We won't spend too much time on the settings here now, or just do a very uh, simple um, fracturing. And very important here is to set the material um, index to, to one. Uh, yeah, as many people told me in the comments on my last video. Um, Zero is the the first um, slot in the material list, and one would be the second one. You know, it just starts counting at zero, and it defines the the material used for all the uh, inside faces in in this object, and we want them to be on the second material. So let's set that to one. And I think that's all we have to do for now. So just fracture it and wait for it to to finish the progress and now that this is done you have on the on, let's just move the lamp to the second layer too so you can see what it looks like and as you can see the object is fractured the the UVs of of the of these um, 
pieces are still um, usable for, for everything outside. So that works fine. Just inside we uh, don't have any texturing done. Also the UVs that were created are a lot distorted and not really usable. So um, as a next step Let's do a previous simulation with that, so we, we can see um, better how the parts look like. So let's switch work quick to blend the game and do the collisions. Okay, and record it. Okay, now once we have that, we have our animation here. We can switch back to Blender Render and Let's start texturing it. So we're going to use the UV uh, project uh, project modifier to do that. Before that, uh, we'll um, do some materials uh, settings. Stuff. So go to to, uh, to the materials, select the second one, and then go to textures and change the image movie to to open um, the next texture. I'm going to choose very quick one of of the concrete textures I get from cgtextures.com and let's take this and change it to UV and this time select the inside UV map okay so you can see we have the texture already mapped on it but it looks distorted in many places and yeah just just won't work like that okay so um, what we can do now is using um, the UV project modifier on on just one object, select one of them and select the concrete image here and select the UV map inside and then add an, add an object, an empty for example, an empty object and yeah just select here the empty from the list so this is now our projector. Oh, and also select override image so that it actually takes effect. And now you can imagine this as if this would be a uh, projector with which um, projects from down right now. So if you turn it like this, it would um, show into this direction and project the image on it from, from this side that we're looking at, at the object right now. So here this object here has this on it. Okay, but, but the problem that we have now is even if we, let's uh, copy that modifier very quick to all of the objects, so just select all of them and then make this one the active object just by shift right clicking on it and then with control L you can copy all the modifiers to from the active object. As you can see, we have now the pro uh, we can project it the, the texture already, but we have the problem that we still have distortions at these places there that are not facing to to the empty. So what you can do is copy the empty object, move it to um, here, to here, and somewhere here, just like four projectors from <laughs> from different uh, views. You can also do one. Under, underneath the plane and it's not really the position that, that um, changes things, it's more the rotation that's important. So I'm just doing uh, the position so that I have an overview about which one um, is from is projecting from which direction. Okay, and, and then select again one object that we need to start fixing, for example this one, and just say we have four projectors and start entering the other ones MT001002 and MT003 and that's actually all you have to do um, of course the map is still moving but we'll fix that right away just again copy all the modifiers to from the active object to um, all the other ones so that the texture preview we have now actually no distortion at all and, and what happens is you can see here on this face once this face uh, reaches an angle when it is closer to another projector it, it switch, uh, switches between these two 
So there's ne there never is a situation where it is too distorted or, or not usable, the result. Uh, now go to the first frame. And now we have to do something that should be easier in my opinion, but I haven't found a way to do that automatically. Uh, which would be applying uh, these modifiers. And I thought there would be a feature like, I don't know, apply modifiers or something to all of all the selected objects, but I didn't find that feature. Of course, if you know that there is that, use that, it, it is really useful. But if you don't, just apply the modifier, hide the object, select the next one, apply it, hide it, apply it, hide it, and so on. Um, I'm going to pause my recording now to do that uh, very quick. Now I'm almost done, done with all of the parts. And OK, I have to admit that this is really a problem if you have thousands of parts in your scene. And yeah, I just didn't find a way to, to do it uh, easier. But I'm sure it should be able, someone should be able to write a Python script or something for that. It's really just applying and, you know. Okay, and then just did Alt H to, to unhide all the hidden objects. And we also don't need these empty objects anymore. And now when you play the animation, you can see that um, the texture is now uh, fixed and it's, it doesn't move around anymore. And we also have a nice um, blending between these faces. For example, let me find very quick one. Yeah, here is one of the situations. Here are two sides and the angle between them is not too much and the image just goes from here to there and from, from down here to this one without uh, a seam so it's seamless uh, in some of, the, of these um, places and yeah so we have a texture outside which we can change and just go to our first material and select another concrete texture for that, a different one for example this one Okay, let's let's scale it down a bit, but it works quite good, I think. So everything is textured now. You could do it a lot better if you have more time. But that's mainly what I wanted to teach you in this video, and I hope to you enjoyed watching it. And also, I have good news for all of those who are saying that um, the noise in in the the background noise of of my recordings is way too loud and, and you're too distracted from all the clicking. I'm going to get a new microphone in a few days so um, I think the next recording or, or the one after that one uh, will be with the new microphone and so the quality of the videos will be much better uh, of the audio actually. Um, yeah, so that's actually all I wanted to say for now. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye!